we thought by the time we got out of there, it was such a long time ago that everyone would have forgotten that we were even there. And that all we wanted to do was go and have a cup of coffee and, and a nice proper meal. And we thought when we get to the airport, if we ever get out of here, we go to the first restaurant we find and we'll go talk to the manager and say to him, look, please, if we can just have a meal and some coffee, we'll give you an IOU and we promise you we'll pay you. And then we were going to phone our family to come fetch us. That's what we thought would happen. Never would happen the way it did. <laughs> it's, it's so strange because you're just normal people and you've got all these cameras and people rooting for you and, and you only find out then it's it's like it's just like a dream. It's, it's, it doesn't seem real. A computer game. Yeah, yeah, we used to think it was a computer game. We thought, yeah, little animations <laughs> being driven by unknown powers. The only word that we was best to was surreal. Mm -hmm. And at one stage we thought we were actually dead. Because in Mogadishu, the bombing was all around us and sometimes it came so close. And I thought, we thought, well maybe we've been bombed and we've actually died. But it was so quick that we didn't know that we're dead and we're in purgatory now. <laughs> because you go through all this torment in your mind. I used to go to sleep in the morning. I mean, I used to wake up in the morning crying. I used to go to sleep at night crying. Uh, just because of not being able to see my children again because of all the things, bad things I've done in my life and I wanted to try and fix them and make them right but I couldn't I thought, no, it's too late when you die, it's too late, hey, you realise this and then after months we thought, no, we can't be dead because we're still here and then I started getting hope and I started thinking, well now if I'm not dead that means I've got a chance to make things right again and you stop feeling sorry for yourself and you start thinking in a new way, in a different way. And then it just started getting more and more strength all the time. And, and because I'm a stubborn, re rebellious type of person, I won't give up. I don't give up easily. I had to try and get these people to understand that we were human, we're not animals. Because they treat us like animals, worse than animals. Untouchables. They picked up our ball with... a. a piece of plastic or they would kick our balls if they didn't have it because they didn't want to touch it. We weren't allowed to touch the door handles to go into the bathroom. If we did we would get hit. The one time they moved us they didn't even give us a toilet. They, they gave us a, t a toilet was a tint but this one time they didn't and I had to knock on the door and I needed the toilet. And every time I knocked on the door they would kick me or hit me or stick a gun in my back digging it in like this pushing me to the toilet. They just, they don't treat you like a human. You get degraded, you get humiliated. But once you get through all of that, it's, it's different. You, it, it humbles you, teaches you forgiveness, it teaches you tolerance, patience, all the things that are not materialistic or that are deep within you and, and brings it out of you.